beautiful day in a land of 10,000 lakes, and when that happens, we move the cameras outside. And it's not the same kind of camera perspective that I normally do in a sitting inside with a camera in front and a camera above, but when it's nice outside, let's, let's get outside and, and try some of these from a different camera angle, different perspective, maybe even a different vibe. But today we're doing something a little bit off the beaten path. Uh, I think in the dozen or so videos I've done so far, we've looked at Oris and Zen and Seiko, um, NTH, you know, and some brands that are a little bit more familiar to people. Today we're taking a look at the, uh, I believe if I pronounce this right, it'd be the Aquinas or Aquinas Immersius. Of course, the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> wow, you, sir, are a mouthful. That is a mouthful. I'll probably just shorten it to the Immersius as we go through that. That's a little bit easier for me to say. Uh, but it's not a, you know, I didn't even look on YouTube, honestly, as I'm thinking about this, if there's any videos on this uh, or not. And I don't remember how I came to get this watch in my possession. I moved quite a few watches in the early part of my collecting journey in and out. But let's, let's run down this watch. Um, it might be of interest to you, it might not. But uh, let's take a look. Okay, so when we take a look uh, at this watch, kind of the first thing that, that jumps out is the uh, bottle cap nature of the case. It is not sort of your standard sub case, if you will. Um, wearing the Omega Seamaster today, right? A, a case shape, and I know the Omega is different than a sub, but um, you're familiar with a typical dive style. This, you know, I did have one other micro brand with this kind of uh, round case. I think it was the Marchand Racing inspired uh, watch review. But it, that's always an interesting look on your wrist when you're not used to it. But it's a big watch. We're talking 45 millimeters, uh, nearly 15 thick. Uh, I had 14, 14 and a half, something like that. Uh, it's a 22 uh, millimeter uh, lug width on the band. Now the lug to lug is different because the lugs are actually right indented uh, in here. They don't protrude out from the case. The lugs are actually into the case. So the, the lug to lug is kind of an irrelevant uh, measure in that regards because the wrist presence is the full diameter uh, of the watch. And again, right, when we compare here, we know that a 41 millimeter case the lug to lug matters because you're going out beyond the case on, on a traditional style watch. But here you can just consider it uh, in terms of wrist presence, 45 millimeters from the 12 to six and 45 millimeters from the uh, two to eight. So uh, round and a little bit uh, unusual in that way. You have a applied uh, indices uh, on the dial and the loom is uh, decent to good. And we'll put in a, a loom shot there. The bezel, a little bit different than your standard uh, countdown bezels because you have a 60 there. Uh, most of the time you have a triangle with the pip like on the Omega, uh, Omega here. This one has the 60. The bezel action is, I would say it's okay. It's a little bit, uh, not spongy, Seiko-like in terms of its feel. For those of you who have a Seiko, you'll know what I mean. And if you have this watch and disagree with me, I'd love to see uh, how you feel. It's very different though than some of the watches uh, from micro brands I had. A little less tactile, it doesn't feel quite as uh, stiff or hard to turn. Uh, so the turning is quite easy. Uh, you have the uh, pretty aggressive coin uh, edge um, finish on the side there. The case is all brushed and the bracelet has some polishing down the center link. The bracelet tapers uh, very slightly down to the buckle. The buckle is signed, or at least has the wave. You have the two button pusher and the fold over clasp with the Akinas name there. Three micro adjustments, right? So kind of standard stuff. We have a um, screw in links on the bracelet. And we have the date at uh, three o'clock. So that's the, the rundown uh, and, the, and the look of the watch. What I'll roll in here is about a 
a 20 second um, picture montage of this. Uh, let's. I, I got to think of a good name for this segment of of my reviews. We'll call it Watches in the Wild for now. But just some different uh, camera shots to try to give you different looks, different angles, uh, different contrasts and, and juxtapositions. I um, find that kind of fun and interesting uh, when it comes to watches to give you uh, a better sense of what it might what it might look like or entail. In wearing this, I found the bracelet to be okay. It is a little uh, rough uh, down here at the clasp. I did notice it was wearing on my wrist a bit. So there's some uh, sharpness or hot spots uh, right in there on the bracelet. And that's, they're not the only ones. I've had that on other watches too. Uh, the, the buckle, I think it's a little small and I wish that micro brands would get away from this one uh, and do uh, more of the six uh, micro adjustment size uh, on the buckle. I find them to be a little more comfortable and a little bit more manageable. Uh, if you have a larger wrist, this watch will fit right out of the box. Um, I had to take links out and I have an eight and a quarter inch wrist. So no issues uh, for larger wrists in, in buying this with a supply bracelet. And like I said, I think the bracelet is, is okay. It's certainly not great. There are rough edges, uh, both at the buckle and along the sides. The case itself, the brushing is very nice. Uh, the bezel is lines up perfectly with the chapter rings. Um, there's no uh, back plate on the bezel. Um, I find the 60 minute mark to be a little distracting as opposed to the pip. Uh, because if you're timing stuff, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because all, all I'm used to is the triangle pip. But I have something that's clearly different than the rest of the dial in terms of where to line it up on the minute hand. And I always had to remind myself, which one am I pointing it to here? Oh yeah, I gotta put it to the 60. Maybe I'm just stupid, you know? Maybe I'm not the brightest bulb uh, on the planet. And I don't know if they were going for a retro, if there's some retro um, styling that they took their inspiration from that put that 60 there. Or some famous watch, everyone's like, you're so dumb, you don't even know that that watch had the 60. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you know, I'd prefer that. That's such a minor thing. I have only one issue with this watch, and it's an issue that's important to me in this channel, and that is good value for money. And you want to, look, in the time we're in too, earning, earning money, um, it, it can be difficult. And so when you make watch purchases, when you watch somebody on YouTube and they say, hey, this watch is great, you wanna know that they're actually thinking about the person they're giving that uh, advice to. And it's a little disingenuous for me to say, hey, this channel doesn't take watches from everybody. Uh, I'm a nobody in YouTube, right? There's only a handful of subscribers. We're very new uh, in our growth here. But the purpose of me starting this channel was for me to buy the watches, me to experience them, flip them, understand almost every aspect of it. Because I know that th there's a lot of collectors like me out there that aren't going to be paying $20,000 to get two uh, Swiss made luxury watch watches or one German uh, longer or something like that. But we do enjoy the hobby and we want to get good value, good case finishing, solid movements, uh, good um, price to spec ratio. That's, I don't even know if that's a thing, but y you understand uh, what I'm saying. And I think if you like a, what I just call a bottle cap design, it's fine. Uh, it's a big watch, 45 millimeters. You know, you got to have a big ham bone attached to your elbow um, to be able to uh, wear something like that. It's not thin, it's not diminutive. This is not a watch that you're ever gonna wear to, for dressing up uh, under a suit. It's a, it's a beast, it's, it's meant for uh, sporting, recreation, uh, water, things like that. So in that specific purpose, it's a good watch. The issue is the price. On their website, and I know I didn't get it from their website, so, um, wherever I did get it from, I didn't pay this, but their website says it's $845. That's, um, that just doesn't fly. And 
I think the market for these understands that if you go to eBay, you can buy them basically like new, brand new, good sellers. The watches look like they're, they're, they're straight from the company and you get them for under 300 bucks. And to me, that's where this watch is. Um, I appreciate uh, the Immersius has several different colorways. Actually, this, the applied indices and the black and the red is all well done for sub $400. And to me, that's where this watch is of value. Just because there's so much competition at that $800 level from extremely unique uh, designs and finishing and attention to detail. Um, from, well, the NTH watches at 675 have every bit the specs of these and you're already $200 cheaper, right? Uh, you, Helios is cheaper, Zelos. Axios Ironclad. I mean, seriously, there's this is just not full retail uh, on the website. So that's my that's my caution to you. If you like this watch, this one in particular will be out on on eBay uh, shortly. It'll be under three hundred dollars. I think I'll I'm gonna have it for like two fifty, two seventy five, something like that. And there, I think you're actually getting a little bit of a bargain, right? A Salita movement, uh, good water resistance, average. Uh, bracelet and you know average to slightly above average finishing um, on the case and a dial with applied indices and a, and a Swiss movement N now you're talking right sub $400 now we're talking uh, on a watch that would deliver uh, value so I'll cut it off there solid watch from a construction standpoint please look on eBay to find these if you're interested uh, you're gonna get them for sub 400 all day long. I think right before I came out here, I saw four of them on there. All of them were under $400, all new or like new. So that's the range. That's the price range. Uh, but at that range, you're getting a solid uh, quality, unique, interesting watch. Big, yes, a big watch. Um, it's a beefy, beefy kid there. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'll be bringing uh, some more watch reviews quickly. We're, we're shrinking the time between videos now as we get uh, better and better at you know, editing and just understanding what we're trying to do in a video. Uh, the, the watch reviews coming up, we have the Boulder Expedition coming up. Uh, this Omega, um, and this will be an interesting review. And then we have a Boulder Expedition and a Certina um, PH200DS something rather there their retro diver that they released a couple years ago. So I think those will be some good reviews coming up. Thanks for hanging out. Check me out on Instagram. And hey, strike a blow for the common little man on YouTube. Uh, share this video, uh, make my day and subscribe, like, comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, either one uh, I'm good with. Uh, we're just trying to uh, find our space of being just a um, average Joe uh, uh, watch enthusiast here on YouTube. So thanks for hanging out. God bless. We'll see you later.